Did you own a 3DS or have you ever played this game? Yeah, that's right, it's Street Pass Quest. This game works by passing by people, and every new day that you pass by someone else's 3DS, you and me would travel to their device and then level up once a day for every time that you pass by them. You'd be able to play mini games with the Miis that you've collected then. One of these games that you can play is the Street Pass Quest. Now, this is a game that I loved and I thought, well, what if you got a community together to play it like Steam? And that's when the idea for a Twitch game appeared to be put on Steam. So to begin with, the Twitch project would rely heavily on an asset designed for listening to Twitch chat. This was called the Unity Twitch Lib. It pretty much handled all information from within a specific channel's chat box. To get this working, I need to set up a nice UI box, which gives the streamer everything that they need to hook it up to their channel, name, authentication link, and a way to generate it. Now, with my shiny UI sorted, we need to think about how players join. Well, to do that, we are going to handle the commands for joining and leaving to join and leave. Pretty much some boring code that simply says, I can listen to however many commands that I want, only one vote per person, and this will handle any command that they've thrown and how it is handled afterwards. And then it hit me. What happens when somebody joins? Just exclamation mark join doesn't do enough. It doesn't tell the game anything. Realistically, I want a player to go from here to here. I want them to fall from the sky and land on their pedestal. Now, to start off with, I designed a dungeon. I designed a nice little hub room where people can join and leave. It's not really the most interesting thing, but it was interesting to learn how to do it. So to try and accommodate my game to feel a bit like Street Pass Quest, I want to make it so every time a player joins and they complete a whole game all the way through, that is classified as one day and they level up. That means the amount of damage they do, the amount of crit damage they do goes up. To prototype the dungeon, I am using the Cinti Studios dungeon pack to kind of create this little low poly environment. Look, wow, it's great. Except it's not. It sucks. It's boring. Get this? <clears throat> now we have something much nicer. We have an outdoor environment. Oh yeah, we got trees and grass and a heavily oversaturated environment, which we'll come back to later. With the environment done, it's time to work on combat. That means we need to handle some way of attacking, some way of using spells, some way of taking damage. And in the original game, your damage was based off of the level you are, which is quite useful when you're doing things based on time. Each player is also assigned a color. This means that you can do crit damage to ones of the same color or you do your normal level damage to things that aren't. This kind of gives the flexibility to work out in your teams how this works. And to apply this, I have set up a system so that every time a player joins, a new player is generated with a random color. Each player will get the ability to attack three times. And after those three times, he gets attacked and he leaves. And it's a rotation cycle. You have spells like healing, buffing, defense, and more. There's six colors, so I'll figure out the other three colors. One might just be absolutely useless. And I haven't got spells done, but I've got the basic premise for attacking done. I wanted some kind of dialogue system. If you look here, you'll see the Street Pass quest has these little dialogue boxes that tells you what you've done to who, how much damage you've dealt, how much you've been dealt damage. And I kind of wanted to replicate a similar system to that. I built a very primitive dialogue system. Next were animations. And if you know me, hello, Mixamo. Hello. I enjoy Mixamo very much. It's such an easy tool for people to use. And realistically, going through all the animations they have, you can kind of get almost everything you would need for a casual game. Now, I've spent the last week with characters that have just T-posed and walked everywhere. Not good enough. As you can see here, he's not T-posing anymore. He's walking and attacking. I did find quite an interesting bug though. Um, when I'm doing all of my level design procedurally, I'm doing it all randomly so that I can have variety in my game. And one thing I noticed is, oh, it's so bright. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't work well when you spawn multiple in because there's a light source in each one. I squashed that bug and it was all good. It's all gone. No more light. No more light problems. Now looking back at my environment, and I did say I was gonna come back for this one. Look at it, it looks horrific. You've had about three to four minutes to remember it. Does it still look as good? Then cut it with me. So I 
went to all of my 3D model friends who have a way better idea about 3D modeling than I do, asked them how on earth do you texture things? And they pointed me to this application. This is Substance Painter, and it's a really, really good professional software that you can apply and paint textures onto 3D models, which I've never done. But I tried anyways, and I grabbed a dirt texture, a grass texture, some really colorful gems, some floor tiles, and some rocks. And I applied to everything. Here is before. I know. It's great. And here is after. Wow! After applying all the textures, it looks so much better. Yeah, much better. Much, much, much better. What do you do when... I'm not going to continue with that. And that's where my two weeks have been. It's been a busy, busy two weeks. However, I went on holiday. I've just got back and... Guess it's time to continue working on it. If you have any ideas for gameplay, things that you'd like to see in a game like this, feel free to tell me. I am very much okay with the idea of doing it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, all the wonderful YouTube algorithm stuff. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.